everyone. It really is such a pleasure to be here this evening and such a privilege um, because I really do believe that early childhood is such a crucial developmental stage. And as we know, knowledge is power. So I'm even personally really looking forward to hearing the other professionals speak tonight because as a psychologist and a mom, I'm always learning. So the first five years of a child's life are most crucial because this is where 90% of the brain development occurs. They learn and develop at a rapid rate. And it is during this time that most learning actually occurs. It is usually during the first six years of a child's life. So we really need to make sure that we make these formative years count. In my capacity as an educational psychologist, I see children for both assessment purposes, as young as three years of age, and then also for therapy purposes. And one of the most important things that I do when assessing a child is I try to gain an understanding of the child from a holistic perspective. So that is where I really like to make contact with the key role players from both past and present. So information where we can draw on is from teachers, from parents, therapists, and any previous school reports also are really, really vital. Developmental milestones are so important to use as a guideline to compare a child's functioning to that of children of that same age group. And really, I have to say, my advice is be more proactive. I would rather be overly cautious as opposed to turning a blind eye. So when assessing a child, I really believe it is so important to go back to basics. So for example, some of the things that I always ask parents is what time is bedtime? How does the child sleep? And also, what is the bedtime routine like? Children should be in bed by 7 p.m. absolute latest. And obviously your younger children, that would be earlier. Because going to bed, furthermore, with a device is an absolute no-no. And I hear about this so often in my practice where a lot of parents will say, oh, I've put my child into bed and I let them play on YouTube or I let them watch YouTube or play on games for a while. And really my biggest concern here is that the blue light from my electronic devices actually suppresses the melatonin levels in the body. And as a result, this delays sleepiness. So as a result, you have a child who doesn't have a restful sleep and you have a child who then struggles to concentrate the next day in the classroom. And so often, this is what we see when children struggle to concentrate and sometimes even manifest as behavioral issues, the golden opportunity. And that really is a time of day where the parents can connect with their children. It's a time of day where you can reflect on how the child's day has been. And it really is, if you take the time, if you really make the effort, it's incredible to see what comes out during this time. So this leads to my next concept of mindful parenting. And it's so important to increase child, parental child interactions. Sorry, I've got a cat that's just jumped up there. Um, where both parties are fully engaged and present. Moms and dads, we really, really need to watch our cell phones. I can't tell you how many times during my therapy sessions this comes up as a big concern for the children. So often when we do our family drawings, this is often where the children will draw a picture of their mum, dad, brothers, sisters, any significant role players. And so often it comes up where mum or dad are on their cell phones. And if you've ever been in the company of someone who is preoccupied on their phone, you'll know it's not a great feeling. Dinner time is another important one, and that really is golden time, because firstly, the kids can't go anywhere, and secondly, it really is important, and it's such a, such a crucial time for the family to reflect on their day. And this is where, through mindful parenting, we can really encourage proper communication and just really the ability to converse with our children, which is so important. And in so many homes where life is busy, I don't think we take enough time to converse and to communicate with our children. Screen time, this for me is a constant bugbear. This is something that I think as a parent, I think a lot of us are battling with daily. 
So essentially with screen time, we need to do our level best to try and limit this. The American Academy of Pediatrics suggests absolutely no screen time for children below the age of 18 months. And then minimal screen time for children between the eight, ages of 18 months and 24 months. And they do stipulate that this should be with parental participation. And then our children who are two to five years of age, the APA suggests pretty much one hour of high quality screen time. And that's it. So it's just something for us to be mindful of. As parents, we're not going to tick all the boxes. But if we just, if we're mindful, if we try, at least we're working in the right direction. So device should never, ever, ever be used as a soothing tool, especially for an upset child. Because if we do this, what we are ultimately doing is we're hindering the child's ability to develop self-soothing mechanisms, which are going to be used and very, very important for later on in life. And honestly, the dangers of screen time probably warrants an entire presentation in itself. Before a child does go to school, so much learning happens in the home environment, because this is where our children start to learn their developmental or foundational skills. So for various concepts and where they learn so many important life lessons. Sorry. Um, a lack of play and communication, also known as understimulation, can really hamper a child's learning, as well as his or her physical and mental health. It really is essential to ensure that all children are being stimulated and receiving the correct nutrition, receiving the necessary support, whatever it is that they need in order to assist their development. Play is such an important part of childhood. Unstructured playtime and outdoor activities is crucial because play is the way that children learn new skills and is such an important part of a child's early development. Simple games, they teach your children things about communication, about developing motor skills, problem solving activities and communication. And furthermore, they develop language development. Something as easy as building with Duplo or whether it's building blocks, it teaches a child to learn about shapes, about gravity, balancing, counting. I mean, the list is endless. So furthermore, there's nothing more wonderful than seeing a child enter that imaginary world. Um, and this is where that imagination and creativity really, really yeah, is unleashed. So often I say to parents that TV robs our children of this opportunity to be creative. And when my boys come to me and they say, mom, I'm bored, secretly, I'm actually quite excited inside because this is when they're forced to go and engage in imaginary play. And this is when your coffee table becomes the, the pirate ship or when that old cardboard box that you're going to throw out becomes a Formula One racing car and it costs a parent nothing. And so often when they say they feel bored, a lot of parents, and I think we've all fallen into this trap, we feel guilty and we, we feel as though we need to fill their day with structured activities because we don't want them to be bored. But at the end of the day, this is when that creativity emerges. And if anything, rather take this time to actually enter this imaginary world with your children. The importance of annual screeners and assessments. So whether we're looking at ear screeners or whether we're looking at um, eye screeners, I cannot emphasize enough the importance of these screeners. Because I know that personally, from my personal experience, it changed the course of my son's life. For a minimal charge, we were able to pick up that he wasn't hearing adequately and that he required grommets, which by the way, were life-changing. And then also we were able to, through a visual screener, to detect that he had an astigmatism. So he required glasses. And of course, later on, we discovered that he was actually colorblind. So the same goes for teacher communication. You need to trust your children's teachers. You need to develop a healthy relationship with your children's teachers because they have your child's best interests at heart. And they are essentially able to compare your child to their peers of the same age and able to help you identify areas of concern. You need to listen because ultimately early detection means early intervention. As a parent, 
We're never going to tick all those boxes. I've said that. But mindful parenting is just going to help us to be more aware. As a psychologist and a mom of two boys, I can't stress the importance of can't stress enough the importance of being proactive and helping our children meet these milestones when it comes to intellectual, emotional, social, physical, and our language developments. When your child is referred to an educational psychologist, it provides the opportunity to view your child from a holistic point of view. So this assessment provides insight regarding the child's language ability, problem solving, memory, concentration, numerical understanding, and many, many more different areas. And collaborative information allows us for, or allows us to create insight regarding the social, emotional, and behavioral functioning. And this is really where we turn to our other therapists because it's their expertise that we rely on. So really I do emphasize and I do stress the importance of taking a collaborative approach. It's a team effort. You've got to have a team working behind your child because essentially we want to help them reach their full potential. And that's it from me.